Hey, hope you're doing well. So normally for videos like this I try to at least write a script beforehand so I don't get too off track, but this time around I'm kinda just winging it. So you know, I might ramble a bit, but hopefully it'll be a nice chilled out kind of format. Also if you're noticing a difference in audio quality compared to my usual videos, that'd be because I got a new microphone this week that I've been very excited to try out. So uh, all being well, this should sound like I'm talking right into your ears, so you know, have fun with that I guess. So first things first, bit of context about what I'm drawing here. This is Paddy. He is the character I play as in the Dungeons and Dragons campaign me and some friends play, called High Hopes Low Rolls. If any of you guys haven't seen the speed paint I did of our party previously, then I'll put one of those info cards in the top corner, I think I know how to do that, um, and you can check that out if you want. So this painting in particular I wanted to do because uh, Paddy is a arcane trickster type rogue character which means that he can do magic as well as sneak around. Uh, and this painting I wanted to do in regards to a spell he has called Crown of Madness. Um, if any of you guys have played D&D, you might be familiar with the spell itself, but if you're not, Crown of Madness is a spell that you can cast on an enemy, or a friend, I suppose, uh, that can make them sort of fall under your control for a bit. And uh, again, if anybody has seen the uh, High Hope Slow Roll speed paint I did, you'll probably already be aware of this, but Paddy is a very aesthetic character. Like, his design is very extra anyway, but so are his spells. Uh, he has a really strong motif of sort of autumn leaves and burnt orange colours, and that's something that whenever we play I sort of imagine reflecting in a lot of his spells. For example, he has a lot of illusionary spells, like Disguise Self, Mirror Image, stuff like that. And I always imagine them sort of fading in and out with the effect of like when you burn the edge of a photograph and there's like flakes of embers coming off. Um, and he's got other spells that are more attack based like magic missile and stuff and shocking grasp. Those are pretty basic, I always imagine them with just sort of a glowing orange colour because that's the colour of his magic. But Crown of Madness is a spell that Paddy only got recently after levelling up. And it's also the one that I have the most distinct visual for in my mind and I really wanted to sort of draw it down but I hadn't had the chance until now because especially with spells like Crown of Madness, um, I always imagine that people's magic in-game will reflect whoever's casting it, and their sort of visual as a character. Because that's one of the things that I always really love with D&D, besides the actual gameplay itself, is that you can sort of imagine whatever you want when it comes to the spell effects and the visuals, and it makes for a lot of really cool ideas. So like if you had maybe a more violent, edgy character, they might have like a barbed wire or iron sort of crown appearing on their enemies' heads. And if you had more of a whimsical pixie of a character, they might just have like a little little actual flower crown of, of like cute little flowers and berries and stuff, and it might be quite nice. Paddy tends to fall halfway between edgelord and whimsical on the scale of things. So I always imagine his Crown of Madness spell looking like a wreath of kind of glowing ghostly autumn leaves. Fun fact, he's only actually used this spell once, uh, and it did work, but it was against a kraken, so it wasn't as... It, it wasn't quite the visual I'd imagined. <laughs> Just a giant wreath of glowy leaves on a very angry squid. Um, <laughs> but yeah, one, one other thing that I do imagine, um, and I don't know if it's the way it's supposed to go with Crown of Madness, but I do imagine that... Um, whoever's casting it, the crown would appear on their head as well as the person who's who they've sort of put the spell upon. I think that was mostly a visual provided by the fact that my brain wanted to see my boy in a cool ghostly flower crown, but we, you know, whatever works. So spell effects aside, as far as this painting itself goes, uh, the style of it, anybody who frequents my channel might recognise as a bit different than the work I normally do. Um, I've been trying to develop a more like actual painty style in recent months, uh, weeks, I don't know quite how long, I have no concept of time, but um, I've taken a few different kinds of influences to try and build up on it, but one that I have been drawing on a lot lately has been the uh, KDA music video that came out for League of Legends. Um, I'm going to assume most of you guys have probably seen it because it got quite big, but if any of you guys haven't seen it then I would recommend checking it out because um, besides being an awesome video with really cool aesthetics, uh, it's also just really catchy as a song. But yeah, I've been taking uh, sort of a bit of inspiration from like screenshots of that because the way they've rendered the characters, um, it's sort of one of those styles where I'm pretty sure it's a 3D animation, but they've rendered it in such a way that it looks like sort of halfway between 2D and 3D. Um, so the characters do look kind of painty as opposed to being really clean in their rendering, which I quite liked. 
But yeah, to try and get a bit of a grasp on how to render characters a bit more... I don't know if realistically is the right word, because I'm still drawing from a cartoon, but to do that kind of sculpting that people can do when they paint, to make the characters look more three-dimensional at least, um, I have been drawing a lot of inspiration from that. In this painting in particular, um, I started out with the basis of KDA, but then brought it a bit more to the sketchy style I'm used to, with a couple of uh, layers of sort of pen over the more defined areas of the picture, which I think work quite nicely for this kind of fantasy illustration, so it's something I'm hopefully going to be able to experiment with a bit more in the future as well. So as far as building on that kind of style inspiration goes for this painting, um, as I say, I did use KDA as a basis, uh, which meant sort of paying attention from like screenshots and stuff to where they put the shading under the eyes and on the face and how they kind of sculpted um, a 3D visual from that. But one thing with at least the screenshots that I was working from was that the shading they did was less realistic because obviously it was like for an animated music video. And I'm not proclaiming that this is the most realistic painting ever, it's of an elf. But in terms of the style, um, I did, while I was painting, sort of remember the kind of stuff that my GCSE teacher said about, uh, like, in my GCSE art class, they would always say, like, if you want natural looking shading, or if you're doing a more realistic painting or something, then you want to shade it with a touch of, like, the opposite colour to the area that you're colouring. So if you're doing skin tones, for example, uh, they're typically going to be more on the warm side of the palette, so reds, oranges, browns, that kind of thing. So if you want to do a bit more realistic shading, you would put in blues or, or greys or greens or like put in a colour reflected from the scenery around them, that kind of thing. It's kind of, I always found it hard to sort of pinpoint that because uh, learning it in GCSE, I was like, okay, cool. And I would just put like a massive splotch of neon purple on their face and be like, why doesn't this look right? Uh, so <laughs> you do kind of want to put it maybe a bit more to the grayscale side of things if you're shading. I tried to apply that here while mixing it with the style I was trying to emulate, and it just made for a really fun painting experience. I think that's one of the things that's quite good about trying new styles, is that obviously you're gonna try your best to emulate the new style that you're trying to learn, but it's also gonna be influenced by all the stuff you've learned before, which makes this whole new kind of thing, and that's always fun to see. So the way I did the leaves on this painting was to make their shape with the selection tool, fill them in with a solid colour, and then select the area outside of them, paint a glow on a different layer, in luminosity and shade mode, I believe, and then go back to the original fill I'd made and reduce the opacity of that so it was kind of faded out, and it gave that nice kind of ethereal look. So with, with any art, but especially when you're learning new stuff, a lot of it is going to be trial and error, and I mean, you'll probably see as you watch this that most of this was error. Uh, <laughs> One thing to note as well is that uh, I did the sketch for this beforehand, and the sketch itself looked fine, but then when I actually painted it, um, I sent it to a friend uh, just to review midway through, and they were like, hey, something about this looks off, and we, we realised like the ears were way too low on the face, um, but because of the way I'd arranged the layers on the painting, I had to select the ears on multiple layers and like duplicate them and erase parts and just so I could move them up and get them on the right point on the face. I also realised that I'd drawn his neck way too long, so I had to sort of select many, many layers and try and move them down and rearrange stuff and erase parts of the body layers I'd made underneath. So to anybody watching who is maybe worried before they start painting something or they don't want to start doing a picture because they're worried they're going to mess it up or make a mistake, yeah, you probably will. Everybody does. But part of the fun of making art is being able to recognise those mistakes and then fix them and be like, whoa, it looks so much better now, you know? So, you know, that's a whole tangent in and of itself, but the bottom line is that if you're scared of drawing stuff because you fear failure, you know, you can't really fail. You can only improve when it comes to drawing because you're going to learn from the mistakes you make. So one of the areas that was both kind of the trickiest to get right and the most fun to paint on this picture was Paddy's mask. Um, it was cool to try and balance out the wood textures with, like, accurate shading, especially because they were right under the area that the crown was going to be, so I wanted to play around with how the light from the magic would kind of affect the colours on the mask. Overall I'm pretty happy with how it went. Um, it's again that thing I was talking about of uh, using opposite coloured shading to make it look more realistic, and it's something I do need more practice with, but I am starting to get the hang of, I hope. It was also a really good chance to use more textured brushes to try and get that wood effect with the lines and the wood grain going through the mask. 
One thing you can do to add a bit more detailed texture to stuff is go over the main colors with a large brush. Um, I tend to use rough flat or rough round on Sai. Um, and then go over it once you've applied the color with like a sketchy pen and put in like fine detail and that tends to work pretty well. Another one of the areas that I had the most fun painting in the end was Paddy's hair. Again, it was that same thing as with the mask of applying color in large strokes and then going in and blending it and refining it until it made this nice sort of textured shape. And one thing I did as well was go around almost everything with just a sketchy layer of white pen to give the effect of rim light. On some areas I used a white pen actually, and on some I used a yellow pen on a luminosity layer, just to give it a bit of colour, make it kind of pop. One thing I'd recommend as well when it comes to colouring paintings is to be aware of the overall palette. I don't know if this is going to make sense explaining it, but with this picture there's a lot of browns and yellows and it's all very much on the warm side of the palette, but it's also kind of desaturated but being aware that the majority of it is going to be orange or brown or whatever means that you'll know kind of what other colours to put in to highlight it. So the areas on this one that would stand out would be the feathers on his jacket that are purple, as well as his eyes, because they're bright green. But you know, that's a question uh, I hear you guys asking a lot, is how do you choose what colours to make your pictures and stuff? And honestly, limiting it to maybe not a set colour palette, but like a base colour scheme is very helpful in figuring out sort of what other colours you can put into a picture. Once I finished recording this much of the drawing process, I adjusted some of the picture's proportions and switched up a few overlays off camera, and then it was done. It didn't turn out quite how I'd imagined it in my head, but I'm definitely happy with it. Especially the crown itself, which was kind of the point of the whole painting. If you guys enjoyed this kind of voiceover, then do let me know in the comments, it was probably pretty all over the place, but it was pretty relaxed to record at least. Also, if you guys have any spells in your own campaigns that you imagine with really distinct visuals like this, then those would be awesome to hear about. Anyway, for now, thank you very much for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time.